Let me ask you to do something for me, please, and that's to close your eyes. And while they're closed, I want you to get a really bright, strong picture of someone who's homeless in our community. Do you have the picture? Okay, you can open your eyes now. Your picture's probably pretty similar to someone I've gotten to know really well over the last few years. When I first met him, he was living under a bridge. He was dirty, skinny, looked like he hadn't had a meal in months. All of his possessions in that bag right next to him, right? And he often asked for all of us to provide him something as you pass by him. Is that similar to your picture? Well, as I got to know Dave, I realized that that was only one piece of his picture. And in fact, as I got to know him more, what I learned was that he was a veteran, honorably served our country for four years, living under a bridge with PTSD. So this is the picture that many of us have of who is homeless in Central Florida. Single guy on the streets, suffering with a mental or physical disability. But would it surprise you to know that's not our entire picture of homelessness? And what do you think the largest population is? Well, we do have some single women. We have some children. But our biggest population, our biggest population of homelessness are our families. They're our neighbors. And they are, in many cases, your employees. So would it surprise you to know, in our community, that one in 17 children, one in 17, are at risk of being homeless this year? That 45% of us, that's 1.8 million people in our community are what we call the working poor working 40, 50, 60 hours a week, often two part-time jobs, and they can't make it. They can't live here in Central Florida. Is that surprising to you? When we're talking about families who can't make it, I want to introduce you like I introduced you to Dave to a family, John and Jenna, and their three kids. Now, John and Jenna just moved their family down to Central Florida because they lost their job up in um, the north. John's got a great skill. He's a computer tech, immediately found a job here in Central Florida making $10 an hour. Now, that's down from his $20 that he made up in Ohio, so his wife is going to have to go back to work to make ends meet. But We've got a great economy here. It's growing and it's thriving. She got a job too right away, making $8.50 an hour as a receptionist. So that's great, right? Two full-time parents taking care of their three children on more than minimum wage. Well, let's see about that. When you take John and Jenna's monthly net income of $2,220, and you take away a modest amount for food and gas, and then you think about their key drivers every month, living in a week-to-week -week hotel because they can't afford the down payment on an apartment, transportation for Jenna because they only have one car, and childcare for three children. Without spending one extra penny, they're in the hole every month $500. Two working adults, working full time, not minimum wage, and they can't make it here in Central Florida. So what are we doing at the Central Florida Commission on Homelessness to make a difference in these populations? Well, let me go back to Dave. Remember I told you, he has a chronic illness, or chronic disability of some sort. And this is the way we traditionally dealt with the Daves of the world. We would send him to a shelter and say to him, well, it's gonna cost you $8 every night that you're here, so what I want you to do is I want to pick yourself up by the bootstraps, go find a job, 
and maybe then we'll find you some housing, all right? Remember, Dave suffers from mental or physical disabilities, and it just wasn't working. Over decades, we kept trying the same old, same old thing, running people through transitional housing, um, asking them to buck it up, go get a job, and it was costing our community $31,000 per year per person to do it this way. Can you imagine? So then there were some really smart people around the country who went, you know what, we need to start challenging the status quo. We need to do something different. We have to change. And so the new model for the 21st century is called the housing first model. Now think about this. If you give someone a home, they're no longer homeless. No, 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 think about that. When you give someone a home, they're no longer homeless. And this is the model we've started employing here in Central Florida. And I am so proud to say that our, our three county region in 18 months, 18 months by using this system, we have housed nearly 800 formerly homeless people, those who had the most chronically severe situations, some of them 10, 15, 20 years living on the streets. 800 people we've housed. That deserves a round of applause, right? Oh, and this model, remember $31,000? This, on average, across the nation, is costing our community 10,000. Not only is it the right thing to do, it is absolutely the smart thing to do. So what about our families, the Johns and Jennas and their children? What do we do about them? Well, we haven't figured that out. What we do know is at the basis of it, we have to get our families stabilized into homes. But it's much more complex because it's economic, right? There is a gap between what we make and what it costs to live in Central Florida. On average, $15. The cost to live here, $20. There's a gap of almost $5 an hour. So what do we do about that? Well. We could raise wages. We could look for creative solutions to affordable housing. We could subsidize transportation and childcare. So what do we do? I would argue, yes, yes, and yes. It is a combination of all of that, but that's gonna require a community strategy. It's gonna take all of us, each and every one of you in this room, whether you represent business, government, Nonprofit, the faith community, we have to have a community strategy on how we fill that gap. And it's not unlike any other community strategy we've ever employed, whether it's, I don't know, build a new stadium or build a university. Even in Central Florida, building an entire medical city. It took a strategy that was based on a shared common vision on what we wanted to see happen. And then underpinning that vision, we have to have great data, clear deadlines, and the dollars to support that shared vision. Can you imagine building this gorgeous place without having all of those elements in place? In Central Florida, you've been on I-4 recently, right? The I-4 Ultimate Project cost us $1.2 billion to get us a better way to transfer from one region, one part of the region to the next. Could you imagine the Florida Department of Transportation doing that without having excellent data, great research, clear deadlines, and the dollars to get it done? Could we employ the same approach to solving homelessness, we can, 
and we are. At the Central Florida Commission on Homelessness, with all of our partners, that's our approach. What we're trying to understand as a system is how do you get 130 different organizations that currently touch homelessness working in the same direction? Well, it starts with great data. For the last three years, the commission has been working to put a face on homelessness so that we can begin to see our homeless as individual people who need our help and support. It also takes deadlines. Two years ago, we said we were gonna house 300 chronically homeless people, and we've housed 800. We can't let up. We have to continue on clear, consistent deadlines so we don't forget who we're serving. And finally, dollars. This is not a government issue alone. We all need to invest in this issue. It's going to take all of us to invest in solving homelessness for it to happen. So shared vision, data, deadlines, dollars. Can we do this? Can you believe in this vision? Because it's gonna take all of us. Can you believe that we could implement a system and the underpinning of that system is the belief that everyone in Central Florida, everyone in our community deserves a home? Can you believe, can we work together to rethink homelessness? Thank you very much.